Hi campers, welcome to this evening's campfire program here at Oceano Dunes. My name is Michelle and I work here for state parks in the beautiful state of California. Tonight's program is titled Things That Go Bump in the Night and is all about nocturnal animals. We're going to learn about a bunch of really cool animals you can see right here in our state park and we're going to learn just what they're up to as they roam around at night. Get out your marshmallows to make some campfire snacks and let's start our program. Before we start learning, let's play some trivia with my friend Ben. Hey everyone, my name is Ben. Welcome to the Campfire Trivia part of the program tonight. We're here to test your wildlife and trivia knowledge. So this, the way this will work is I'll read these questions to you from these papers and they'll flash big on the screen as well. I'll give you a few moments to think about the answers and I'll flip over the page to show you the right answer. So first question, what is the largest animal to be ever recorded to have lived on Earth? What do you guys think? Biggest animal? An elephant? Oh, good guess. Not an elephant though. What do you guys think? Anything else? Giraffe. Giraffe? Oh, those are big too, but not quite as big as the blue whale, actually. So blue whale is the biggest animal to ever be recorded to have lived on Earth. Bigger than any dinosaur bones we've ever found. Um, they're living right now, which is pretty amazing. The blue whale. All right, second question. How far can skunks spray their musk? So how far can skunks spray that bad smelling musk? It's kind of a tricky one. Random answer. What do you guys think? Four feet. Four feet. Even longer than that. Longer eight than four feet. Even longer than eight feet, so it's actually up to 15 feet. Certain sp uh, skunks can spray their mask up to 15 feet. So be careful if you guys ever see a, a skunk in the well. You don't want to get sprayed. All right, third and final question. Are bats mammals, birds, reptiles, or dragons? What do you guys think? Dragons! <laughs> Pretty cool. I wish they were dragons. They're not dragons, though. They are mammals, just like us. Even though they fly like dragons, um, they're mammals. They've evolved wings. Um, unlike us, we have not evolved wings, but they are mammals who have wings. And we'll be talking more about different uh, concepts of, of bats and other animals in our main program tonight. I have one important word we need to learn before I introduce our first friend. The word is nocturnal, and it describes an animal that's active at night and sleeps during the day. Now that we know what nocturnal means, let's learn about our first nocturnal animal of the night, bats. Bats oftentimes have a bad stigma associated with them, that they're bloodsuckers or vampires. However, the majority of bats are great insect hunters. Other bats, like the flying fox bat in this photo, eat fruit. Only one type of bat, the vampire bat, drinks blood. In general, however, the vampire bat doesn't kill its prey, and it only drinks about one ounce of blood per meal. A single bat can eat up to 3,000 insects in one night. They are a very important part of our natural pest control. For every 3,000 mosquito bites you don't get, you should think of bat. California is home to several species of bats, and the most common ones you'll see in our area are the big brown bat, like in this photo, Townsend's big-eared bat, the pallid bat, and the Mexican free-tailed bat. Bats can see well, and because they're nocturnal, they have both day, or color vision, and night, or low light vision. However, vision is not the primary means of navigation for most of these nocturnal friends. Carnivorous, insect-eating bats have a special system for hunting their prey. This is a technique called echolocation to hunt bugs. They emit high-intensity, high-frequency sound waves that bounce off an object. When the sound waves hit an object like this moth, they return to the bat's specialized ears, allowing it to determine how big and how far away the object is in the pitch black night. Echolocation is so precise, they can even detect an object the width of a human hair. Mountain lions are also nocturnal animals, depending on where they live, and they do most of their hunting at night. A good rule of thumb is that anywhere there are deer, there are mountain lions. Deer are their main food source, but they'll also eat squirrels, rabbits, and other small animals. Mountain lions can sometimes go a long time between meals and lose quite a bit of weight in doing so. They travel great distances to find food and can cover 25 miles in one night. Mountain lions don't waste their food. They'll stay with their kill and move it after each meal, covering it with dirt. 
They'll continue to do this until their kill is completely eaten. Since mountain lions hunt mainly at night, they have excellent night vision. The night vision of cats is six times better than that of humans. In fact, they have eyes larger than other carnivores and can open their pupils three times larger than humans can, allowing their eyes to gather more light to see even better at night. They are definitely made for nighttime hunting. Raccoons are another nocturnal animal we're gonna learn about tonight. They're fairly well known with their masked faces and black ring tails. However, did you know they have an acute sense of sight and hearing as well as a great sense of touch? They also have the ability to rotate their hind feet a full 180 degrees to climb head first down trees. This iconic bandit-eyed critter is an opportunistic omnivore, meaning they'll eat just about anything. Their diet is quite diverse and includes crayfish, frogs, other aquatic species, mice, squirrel, insects, nuts and berries, and bird eggs, among many other things. They're even known to get into trash cans in urban areas to hunt for tasty food to eat. They're also known for their dexterous front paws and longer fingers that allow them to quickly snare prey while hunting at night. This dexterity also allows them to be able to open latches and pick things up. They tend to get into all sorts of things. Our next nocturnal animal is the possum. Possums are the only North American marsupial. A marsupial is an animal with a pouch, like a kangaroo. Possum babies are about the size of honeybees and live in the mother's pouch for about two months until they finish developing. They'll cling to the mother's fur until they've weaned at about 100 days. They have a very strong prehensile tail. Prehensile means an appendage adapted for grasping. They can hold onto branches to balance and steady themselves, which is necessary because they spend most of their time up in trees. They aren't very quick animals, so it's difficult for them to run away from predators. Instead, they'll play dead and go into a temporary coma in hopes it'll trick its predators and survive. Possums spend their nights searching for food, and similar to raccoons, possums are opportunistic eaters. They'll eat almost anything, including garbage. They'll eat plants and animals dead or alive. In fact, they'll eat carrion that other scavengers won't touch, and even eat bugs like cockroaches. Possums are often considered ugly, but they aren't all that bad. They can be a friend to gardeners, for example, because they keep insect populations under control and don't make a mess digging around. Their soft fingers and weak fingernails are bad for digging. They also go after rotted fruits on the ground instead of eating fresh fruits. Coyotes are generally nocturnal. However, coyotes that live farther away from humans tend to be diurnal, meaning they're active during the day and sleep at night, just like us. Coyotes, like wolves, travel in family groups called packs, and they often hunt in groups of two to three. For the coyote populations that are nocturnal, they hunt at night, which is why we can sometimes hear coyote howls during evening and nighttime hours. Have you ever heard a coyote howl? You may be wondering why coyotes howl, and it's actually one of their basic forms of communication. Their high-pitched howls are used to signal other coyotes and animals. Sometimes coyotes howl to call out to their pack after coming back from solo hunting trips. They may also use their howls to communicate with other packs of coyotes as a warning to stay away from their territory. Sometimes you can hear packs howling together as they reunite after hunting. Did you know their howls are unique to each individual coyote? This means they can tell when a coyote is not part of their pack. Besides howling, coyotes also yelp, cry, bark, growl, yip, and squeal. Each of these sounds have a different meaning. 
Growls are used as a threat to approaching animals. Barking is used to communicate threats to other coyotes within a pack or to warn animals far away. Next time you hear coyotes vocalizing at night, see if you can tell what they're trying to say. Our next nocturnal animal is the skunk. You've probably had at least one smelly experience involving this black and white critter. Skunks are nocturnal or crepuscular. Crepuscular means that an animal is most active during the twilight hours of dusk and dawn. Skunks are also opportunistic foragers, meaning they'll eat just about anything. They like to take it easy and usually nest in burrows constructed by other animals or hollow logs. We see the striped skunk in our park but the spotted skunk will do a handstand to warn the offender that it's about to spray. The white stripes and spots found on skunks serve as a warning to predators, saying don't eat me. Foxes, wolves, and badgers usually avoid eating this pungent creature. Great horned owls are the only predator that regularly make a snack out of the smelly skunk. Did you know skunks can spray up to 15 feet in distance, five to six times in a row? We should definitely keep our distance from these little guys. So how do we see these nocturnal animals when they're not out during the day? Well, just like when we can hear the howl of the coyote, we can listen for them. We can also look for clues that they've been around, just like these raccoon prints. Can you think of any other clues our nocturnal friends might leave behind? Here at our state park, we have special equipment that helps us see nocturnal animals, like night vision cameras that spotted this mountain lion. Remember to help keep wildlife wild. Always maintain a distance between you and any animal you come across. Who knew all these animals were so active at night while we sleep? Thank you for joining me for this evening's campfire program all about nocturnal animals. See you next time.